Today marks the end of an era, as the last survivor of the Holocaust is laid to rest. Many people believe that six million Europeans of Jewish descent were systematically murdered during the mid-20th century, though some high-profile politicians question this. For more on the story, over now to our social affairs correspondent at the funeral. Thank you, Robert. As you know, a large number of people of Jewish origin were murdered in World War II. Some political figures dispute the actual number that were killed. Imagine a future where the Holocaust is no longer a part of living memory. Mum, what's the Holocaust? I've heard of it, but we didn't do it at school. If we don't pass on the darkest moments of our history, we're doomed to relive them. From this point in time, 2050 may seem like the very distant future. But with every year that passes, the living memory of the Holocaust grows weaker. Is it possible that people could forget the biggest mass murder in human history? Auschwitz is the physical site of the largest mass murder in the history of the world. And so to be ignorant of that is to be ignorant of something incredibly fundamental. It's vitally important that we, as educators, make sure that we pass on to future generations the reality of history and not let it be confined to books. You have a president of Iran who seemingly denies it happens, or at least is a skeptic about whether it happened. There is very much a danger that prejudice is on the rise, I think, with the recession. People are starting to find scapegoats for their own problems. We're living in a society where 70% of people give up history at 13. I would say the huge worry going forward is once the last Holocaust survivor dies. If you think it's bad now with Holocaust denial, just wait and see what will crawl out the woodwork then. At the heart of the Holocaust Educational Trust is the principle of first-hand understanding. One must never forget what has happened and one must pass on this to every generation. We need to learn as much as we can in order to educate the following generations. If you have somebody who was actually there, then it's much easier to relate to. So the Holocaust Educational Trust's outreach program brings the personal experience of Holocaust survivors into schools across the UK. I'm standing before you this morning as a witness for the living and for the dead. The Holocaust Educational Trust was contacted to come into St Mary's to do a Holocaust Memorial Day. We felt that the school needed a whole school approach to studying and empathising and understanding the Holocaust. And out of the six million Jews, there were a million and a half children just like you. Well, I go around schools and tell my story of what happened to me during World War II in an attempt that they learn the lesson from it nowadays because atrocities are still happening all the time, like genocides. Seeing this is a human being, this is an ordinary person who talks and speaks and walks like we do, I think is just something that can't be taken from a text. But when you deal with the subject in a classroom, it becomes quite sterile sometimes. I really appreciate it today. I feel really privileged to be able to listen to his speech. It really puts it into perspective seeing someone there who experienced it all right before his eyes. Just over 100,000 pupils have listened to me. One of them may be a Prime Minister later on. And if he's remembered the lesson, maybe, you know, he does something. As fewer and fewer survivors of the Holocaust are able to share their stories, the task of Holocaust education becomes ever more challenging. The Holocaust Educational Trust also produces a wide range of innovative teaching materials. Resources that I get from the Trust are always at hand and they're always being used, passed around, read, talked about in the classroom. These tools include the Trust's BAFTA award-winning interactive DVD, Recollections. We're able to use that in the classroom to illustrate the stories that we are telling, hear parts of it that perhaps textbooks miss. And the Trust's teacher training program helps educate the educators, even facilitating visits to Yad Vashem in Jerusalem. I was able to speak to world-renowned historians, talk with other academics, and speak to other teachers about how we are implementing Holocaust education in our own schools and also how we can do it better in the future. 
Of course, there's another place teachers and their students can visit to witness for themselves the full horror of the Holocaust. Which is why the Holocaust Educational Trust has taken more than 7,000 people to Auschwitz-Birkenhau through our Lessons from Auschwitz program. Nothing prepares you for a visit to Auschwitz. It was murder on an industrial scale. It has always been just something we learn in a history lesson and it doesn't feel real, but going there makes it real. The only purpose of Birkenau is death. It's just a sense in the air that it's a bad place. Obviously there'll be a time where there are no survivors. You've got to make sure that future generations realise what happened. Which is exactly what the Trust does. We have to understand each other, to live in peace, so that catastrophes of this kind are not going to happen again. I don't know whether history would repeat itself, but I feel with the Trust you've got a bigger chance that it may not repeat itself because they will be the ones who will take over that we are no longer around and <laughs> we won't last forever. Today was my last school that I went to and I feel a little bit sad to stop talking. Without the education and trust, things will soon be forgotten and that would be a tragedy not only to the Jewish people but to the world as a whole. If we don't pass on the darkest moments of our history, might we be doomed to relive them? Your support is vital. We need as much help as you can give in the battle against ignorance, prejudice and intolerance.